welcome to my channel hey what's up everybody it's superior shelby and today obviously we are in black history month okay so that's why i got on my black jacket or whatever it's kind of huge i done lost so much weight but yeah feeling like you know a little black pantherish a little bit but today I wanted to talk about black women in finance and the importance and how we actually paved the way in this financial banking world, right? So uh, make sure you, uh, you know, like and share this video. It's really good information, okay? A nice history lesson for us this beautiful day. And um, also, you know, comment if you like the information, okay? Because it's going to be really good. I decided to take upon myself, like... How do we get start getting into, you know, having the rights to be able to get into financing and things like that? Um, and, you know, what part did we play as black women in the banking, you know, system, right? So make sure you share this video. It's really great information. And make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There will be a hyperlink down below to my Medium blog post where I actually, you know, post my entire article about this topic, okay? So we are talking about black women in finance. This is a black history lesson for us. So let's get started. All right. So first off, I wanted to know how in the world did we even get to the point to where we actually have the rights, especially as black women, but just women in general, having the rights to be able to do the things that we do. All right. So read a nice article. I'm going to read it verbatim and I'll leave the links down below for you guys. Okay. So how we got into having the rights is pretty much by uh, 1918, all right, um, women, we had a whole women's suffrage situation going on, right? You guys remember the whole history lesson of World War I, right? And World War II, that whole situation. Well, when our troops was gone out, all right, women had no choice but to be the men at home, right? We had a lot of duties that we had to do, right? Uh, which resulted us in having to, you know, not only cook clean and things like that, but also we started actually owning businesses. Well, let me tell you something about these two women. There was an organization called the National Woman Suffrage Organization or Association, which was formed in 1869, which with the declared object of securing the ballot for women by an amendment to the Constitution. All right. Anthony and Staten were the leaders of this organization, which held the convention every year after 50 years. All right. After its founding in 1869, another organization, the American Women Suffrage all right, Association was founded by Lucy Stone with the aim of securing women's suffrage by obtaining amendments to that effect in the constitutions of various states. In 1890, the two organizations united under the name National American Women's Suffrage Association and worked together for almost 30 years. Okay, By 1918, however, both major political parties were committed to women's suffrage and the amendment was carried by the necessary two-thirds majorities in both House and Senate in January 1918 and June 1919, respectively. When women gained the right to vote and equal economic opportunities in that time, the when, that's when women became more educated in business, okay? Due to the troops having to fight for our country, women have to, they had to man up in the house, and women founded businesses and started actually chasing their dreams. Now, you guys remember in their early days as women, we was just cooking and cleaning and staying at home, all right? But as the troops had to go and fight for our country, we had no choice but to man up in the house, which means we had to get straight down to business. So that's just women in general. But when we are talking about business and finance and banking, this woman here, Eliza Allen, is something different, okay? Eliza Allen was uh, the only woman listed on the charter of the True Reformers Savings Bank. That was in 1888 and 1910, which was the first chartered African-American-owned bank in the United States of America. So sis was on the committee, all right, all the way back then. And... Um, you know, she was born in slave out there in Westmore County, Virginia, around 1840, and Allen joined the True Reformers when William W. Brown moved to nearly morbid order Richmond, right, which was in late 1880. Um, she organized one of the first three fountains, as the Reformers' local groups were called, um, and her success is organizing large fountains for small, relatively unknown organization attests. Um, assess, sorry, to her long history, organizing and running secret societies. So sis was running secret societies back then in the 1800s, okay? In the late 1800s, early 1900s. Now, 
um, the autonomy that Washington, well, she ended up became, coming, like, long story short, she ended up, like, moving, you know, from out of her state, moved to a better place because things was, remember, this was during slavery time, so things was getting a little heated where she was from, right? She was born enslaved. So uh, once they became free, she ended up relocating, and she became with what most, you know, black women back in the day, she became like a housemaid um, or the help, they called it. Or she became, you know, like a wash lady, right? She would wash clothes or a laundress is what they called her. The autonomy that washing for pay allowed Allen also um, permitted her time to devote to the African-American economic self-help organizations like secret societies. So she was able to be a laundress and then move on at nighttime and while everybody going to speakeasies or whatever you want to call them and the bootleg and all that good stuff. Sis was going to the American, like African American secret societies, getting her her Black Panther on before Black Panthers was out. All right, so she occupied an elite stratum of women who were able to balance high ranking and influent, uh, influential positions in numerous orders, including the Eastern Star, um, tents of the Guiding and Joliffe Union, Union, and the Independent Order of Saint Luke. Okay, the tireless efforts and committed leaderships of women like Allen allow many of the most popular societies to build on the foundation of mutual aid. Um, so, sis was literally like the main foundation when it came down to banks and insurance and banks and organizations for black people in banks for in, in just in whole freedom situation, right? She actually helped pave the way with other, you know, African Americans to allow us, you know, black folks to get into banking and actually have a position in banking. No matter what position it was, she was able to help us get there, right? Now, another person that I want to talk about is Lillian H. Payne, all right? Lillian Payne was the banker's banker, all right? You know, I know you guys have heard a lot of like, you know, back then, Black folks were so innovative that we were able to actually come up and create different, different innovation projects, different, you know, we just paved the way for so many different things that we don't get credit for. She is one of them, all right? So if you guys have heard of um, Maggie Lena Walker, then you know exactly who she is. While Matt, Maggie Lena Walker enjoys the widespread renown as the first African-American woman to organize and lead a bank, that's, that's Maggie Lena Walker. Um, Walker also, she actually relied on Lillian Payne, all right, as her right-hand man. Payne was born in 1867 and worked as a teacher. Payne's first, uh, first work with Walker in the Women's Union, a cooperative society organized in the 19, uh, 1890s, um, composed entirely of African-American women. Ain't that something? The Women's Union. Oh, I wonder if we still got those to this day. All right. The Women's Union operated an insurance office, grocery store, a roommate house, and more. Payne placed among the tiny staff of four women, handpicked by Walker, to revive the independent order of St. Luke, okay, um, in, in 1899. Payne served as an editor of the St. Luke Herald, um, the Order of St. Luke's official organ, pretty much. So she was like the, she did the paper. All right, she was like the editor, she did newspaper, she did all that good stuff, right? You know, secretarial work, right? Payne used the newspaper to not only highlight the membership of business of the, um, of the Order of St. Luke, but she also spoke out on pressing political and social issues of the day. Now, imagine the shade room. That was Miss Payne. Imagine ball alert. That was Miss Payne. Social media was Miss Payne before we even knew what social media was, okay? She was telling all the tea on the, the newspapers and printing it out about, you know, racial discrimination, political rights, all kinds of stuff, issues of what was going on. Payne served on the board of directors of the St. Luke Bank in 1903 through 1929, renamed as the Consolidated Bank and Trust, which they renamed it in 1929 uh, through 2011. From 1903 to her retirement in the 1940s, um, Payne led the finance committee, which underwrote loan applications for more than four decades. Let me say that again. Payne led the finance committee, which underwrote loan applications for more than 40 years, four decades. 
She was the, the underwriter for our loans. If you guys know about loans, the underwriter is who approves the loans, okay? Sis was really doing her thing. Um, so, uh, so she led the fight. She pretty much led the finest underwriting loans, all that good stuff, for more than four decades. And by the 1920s, more than 600 St. Louis Bank customers had taken out and paid in full for their home mortgages. Um, Payne's role in the bank helped thousands of African Americans around the country achieve part of their American dream, which was actually owning a home, owning property, owning something. Miss Payne, okay, was not only Miss Lena Walker's right hand man, but she also was a social media queen, with, which was telling everybody what was going on in the city while, by putting things in the paper and stuff. And then on top of that, she went from that, she went from a teacher to the bank, from the bank, from the bank secretary to the newspaper, from the newspaper to the actual underwriter. And when she went into the underwriting process, she helped so many, paved the way for so many African Americans so they will be able or have the ability to own their homes, right? And also own their land. That was literally the African American dream back then, to actually own a home. So shout out to her, okay? And one last person that I definitely want to talk about is Viola Turner. Now, Viola Turner is Black Wall Street's million dollar investor, okay? If y'all didn't know we had a black woman that was in that was in Wall Street before Wall Street was Wall Street, that is Viola Turner, okay? So let's read on. After World War II, um, African American corporations remained slow to recognize women's contributions to their bottom lines. But a few women emerged as value, valuable assets. Viola Michelle Turner was born in 1900 in Macon, Georgia. All right. She attended the business school at Morris Brown College in Atlanta. If you know about Morris Brown, that's, the, that's some history right there. Okay. She began working as a cashier clerk at the North Carolina Mutual Insurance Company branch office in Oklahoma City in the late 1920s. Turner moved to Dur Durham, North Carolina in 1924 and began working at the insurance company's headquarters at, uh, on Paris Street, also known as Black Wall Street. As a uh, secretary to the company's treasurer, her investment advice and portfolio management earned North Carolina Mutual over $1 million. Let me say that again. As a secretary at the comp the insurance company, okay? <laughs> Her investment advice, <laughs> bro, her investment advice and portfolio management earned North Carolina Mutual over a million dollars. Back then in the 1920s, having a million dollars is like having a billion dollars. You know what I mean? Or close to that. Yeah. Like having hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? This secretary gave so much of good advice when it came down to investment, and she was just a secretary at the insurance company that she made that company a million dollars. She was a very high valuable asset for them. Her financial acumen placed her among the savviest women investors in the country. Okay, Wall Street brokers sought Turner out, bypassing many male executives and employees of the company to speak directly to Turner, who officially was only the secretary. So she was out here doing all kinds of stocks and all kinds of investment, telling people how to invest. And honestly, men was just getting bypassed because they wanted to see Miss Viola Turner. We want to go see what she believes and what she thinks since she made this company a million dollars. She became well known as a high ticket earner, right? Early on, some men in the company patronized her investment portfolio as Turner's little project, right? She would not have considered herself a feminist, but she pushed for equal pay and treatment for female employees. In 1957, she was elected treasurer and later vice president of the North Carolina Mutual, becoming the first woman executive. She retired in 1965. She was the first woman executive for the uh, North Carolina uh, Mutual Insurance Company. That is dope, okay? And she was deserving of that. Matter of fact, her and her family is deserving of a piece of the company. Mm -hmm. A big piece of the company, okay? So in my conclusion, I find it interesting how as a culture, we are quick to tear each other down as if we never had a chance. You know what I mean? We all come from innovators. I want you guys to know that. It is pushed, It is a pushed agenda for like drugs and, and drugs and alcohol and defunding the public schools so that there can be control over an innovative culture. 
and influence your children on some money saving tips okay and the importance of keeping your identity that's what i highly advise this is my superior solution you guys i want you guys to know that we don't come from like these um like we don't come from people that's just like lousy right you know what i mean black folks come from actual innovators more than just doctors and lawyers and we come from like scientists and all kinds of stuff engineers things like that Viola was used for information and helped men gain millions of dollars. She earned so much respect and didn't back down. Lillian H. Paris, uh, I mean, Lillian Payne, sorry, was bold enough to be a blog for Blacks and published the progress on Black economics. All of our Black innovators helped shape this country. Yet because of the ego and selfish agendas, we no longer are focused on the acceleration of the powerful household. And it's true. So whether you are a woman of color, all right, white, black, Asian, don't, it doesn't even matter. Educate your daughters, educate your kids, uh, and especially, especially if your kids are in girl groups and things like that, on the history of women for sure. And women are strong. We're strong, we're feminine, we're innovative, we're trailblazers. And without, you know, without us, there wouldn't really be too much business going on, right? You know, we actually birthed the men. <laughs> a woman gives birth to a man so or a son to build the building, right? So the woman birthed the daughter to run the company. That's how I feel. So take this advice and let's power up. That is my entire article, you guys. But ultimately, I really I really wanted to come to you guys and to, like just let you guys know on like, you know, black history, black women in finance and how we were able to scale up. Not only did we think do things like create the perms, hot combs, peanut butter, the light bulbs, okay, and all of that good stuff. But we also paved the way for a lot of our Black folks to be able to own their houses, a lot of our Black folks to be able to be in starting high-value high positions back then, which was like being a secretary or, you know, being something more than just being the help inside the home, right? Um, because, you know, before then, everybody wanted to be in the house, right? You want to be a house slave in a, in a, in a sense, right? But things we got more innovative, right? Technology or not really technology, but you know, things kept moving forward. And you know, women and black women especially are innovators for sure. Black people in general, we are all innovators. We all have a really powerful mind. We just have to make sure that we put our, our focus on actually being innovators, actually being the, the people that we're destined to be, right? So don't allow this social media to drown your kids or drown you, all right? Get off that phone when you first wake up in the morning. Do not hop on social media. It's, no, don't do that, all right? Make sure you pray, meditate, and keep it pushing and do what you got to do to make sure you reach your destiny and your goals, okay? Everybody, before you're born, you already have a destiny, all right? You already have a destiny. You just got to keep going, all right? Things might like might look a little bit challenging for you, but guess what? God would have never put you in this position. God will never put something more on you than you can't bear. That's something I know at first hand. And you got this, okay? You definitely got this, all right? I know it can be challenging for us out here, but guess what? We live in a society that's already against us, period. That's just what it is. And we are not in our actual, you know, comfortable state. All right, this is really not what we're supposed to, this same 95, 95, 95, that's really not us for real, naturally, okay? We are natural innovators, engineers, mathematicians, teachers, healers, all of that good stuff. So make sure you find what's best for you and stick with it, okay? Stick with it. I know it can be challenging, especially if you guys are just now starting a business, especially if you are in your business and you feel like it's, it's sinking, right? You feel like you're at a sink or swim type of situation. Like literally, there's so many opportunities out here. I just want you guys to start changing your mindset, opening your mind, quit the bad habits, and let's focus up on what you need to do in order for you to get to that next point, okay? So love you guys. I hope this history lesson was really good. All right, really good and really informative for you guys. Okay, make sure you share this to your daughters, to your niece or, or your little cousin or somebody so that way they can know the history of black women in finance. Okay, I got my Black Panther, you know, jacket on, all right, with my black hat. So I'm really feeling a vibe. I love you all and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.